It's time for Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. Join us as we study the uncompromised Word of God and how it can be applied to our everyday lives. Tonight we're going to talk about the work of rest. The work of rest. Sometimes it's a chore to rest. And we're, we're faith fighters. We're good faith fighters. We're all about the fight of faith. But there's a balance. Not that you ever slack up on the word or you ever slack up on the fight, but there's a rest that we're supposed to be able to enter into because of our trust in the word, because of our trust in God. So I want to start off in Matthew chapter 11. Jesus speaking. Matthew 11, I'm going to start reading in verse 28. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. Your soul. That's that very busy, busy thing that sits on top of your shoulders. That's your, your emotions, your thought processes, uh, that, that seat of thoughts that's constantly rolling. Jesus is giving us an invitation. Come unto me. That's an invitation. It's not something that everybody does, but it's something we're invited to. Come unto me, who? All you that labor and are heavy laden. We'll read this out of the Amplified and you'll find out it probably fits you. Come and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let me read that out of the Amplified. I think I put it in your notes that way because it was so good. He says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. Anybody here tonight that can use that? Just quiet my mind. You know what I mean? Just quiet my mind. Give me a mental vacation. We, we use a lot of things to satisfy our soul and to give our souls a break. We call it mental candy. But this is mental rest. This is, this is the, really the only safe place for us to relax our mind. Any, anything else, we're vulnerable. But we can rest in the Word. We can find a peace there and we can slow our thoughts down and take that mental vacation that we so desperately need. It will ease, relieve, and refresh your soul. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am gentle, meek, and humble, lowly in heart, and you will find rest relief, ease, and refreshment, and recreation, and blessed quiet for your souls. I love that part of the Amplified. Blessed quiet. Anybody need blessed quiet in your brain? I mean, just, this is where we live, folks. We, we have so much fed into our souls, there is very little quiet. But Jesus is giving us an invitation to a place in him where there is a blessed quiet. Ever since Ladies Agape, we've been working on quiet around here. Annette Capps taught us a valuable lesson about quiet. You wonder why we don't have the full band up here on Sunday night. We're stripping it down. Sunday morning, we blow blow the clock off the wall one day. Mark says it was his bass playing. And and I'm all about that. Loud is godly, but quiet is godly. And sometimes we just need to come into the presence of God and just have a, a, a blessed quietness for our souls. So I really like that out of the Amplified. For my yoke, verse 30, is wholesome. It's useful. It's good. It is not harsh. It is not hard. It is not sharp. It is not pressing but comfortable. 
our walk with God, our walk with Jesus, us yoking up with him, it's, it's not hard. It's not sharp. It's not painful. But it's very comfortable. It's gracious and it's pleasant. And my burden is light and easy to be born. Now religion will tell you anything but that. If it's anything but that, we're doing something wrong. We're thinking wrong. This walk with Jesus, he has done the work. Now he's asked us to yoke up with him. Has everybody seen a team of oxen, at least on the movies? A team of oxen working together, yoked together. The reason they do that is so that one is not, not bearing all the burden. Well, Jesus has asked us to put on his yoke to walk with him and he's already done the work. All I have to do is walk with him. Walk with him. And I think sometimes when we talk about the fight of faith and different things, we get so busy, as, as we say, trying to keep the plates spinning, confessing this over here and praying and praising, and oh, I've got to remember to, I've got to, wait, let's just bring it back down to where we are. If we're yoked up with him, he will lead us. He will, if we yield to him and we quit trying to do our work, and we yoke up with him, he will lead us into the things that we need to be doing. And then those things are not difficult. Take my yoke. Don't do this alone. Get me involved. Let me lead. That's what Jesus is inviting us to, that we don't have to do this work alone. In fact, if we get real, real about it, our salvation is complete. We're learning to walk it out. He'll lead us into it. We got to quit trying to save ourselves. I think so many times we try to rework the work of Christ. We try to rework the work of Christ. We struggle to get healed. Okay, this is what you need to do to get healed. Oh, prosperity, job, career. This is what you need to do to prosper. Peace. This is A, B, C, D. One, two, three. Do these steps and you'll have peace. Let's just bring it back down. Yoke up with Jesus. He's already done the work. The work's already done. Team up with him. You want so, hard, so bad to be accepted. You want so bad to have favor. You're working, 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 working. And all these things are already given to us. The fight of faith is receiving those things. Not getting them. It's, it's, a, it's a mentality that we have to work on that we have been made righteous, which is probably going to be our next subject on Sunday mornings. We've been made right with God through the gift that Jesus gave us. These things are already in our account. They're already ours. And yet we're trying to rework the works of Christ. They're provided in the work of salvation already. Now we let him lead us into those things. I think many times we're trying to plow ground that he's already sown. Favor, acceptance, forgiveness. Wait, that's ground that's already sown for me. Any, anybody else do that? Don't rework what Jesus has already done. Let him lead you and, and rest in that. Go with me to Psalm 23, probably one of the most beautiful passages of Scripture. How many of you ever memorized Psalm 23 as a child growing up. It's one of those that you learned. What a great one to learn. There is so much beauty and rest in this passage. I'm reading it out of the Amplified just so you won't do it by memory. Uh, sometimes if we do things by memory, we miss something. And so if you switch up a word or two, sometimes it'll get your attention. So it says, the Lord is my shepherd to feed God and shield me. I shall not lack. He makes me lie down in fresh, tender, green pastures. He leads me beside the still and restful waters. He refreshes and restores my life, myself. He leads me in the paths of righteousness, uprightness and right standing with him, not for my earning it, but for his name's sake. Yes, though I walk through the deep, sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil, for you are with me. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
You anoint my head with oil, my brimming cup runs over. Surely, or only, goodness, mercy, and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life, and through the length of my days, the house of the Lord and his presence will be my dwelling place. That's peace. I mean, this is, this is supposed to be the soul of the believer. This is supposed to be a description. This is supposed to be how my soul is. And I think we have to work to, to keep our minds in this rest. That's why we called it the work of rest. We have to remind ourselves, no, th this is the life right here. And I love that he makes me lie down. I told myself today, if you're tired, you're not resting. And that's a real simple revelation. But if I'm, if I'm, if I'm tired, I'm not resting. In the word. I mean, it's also true in the physical. If I'm tired, I'm not resting. But in the word, in, in our Christian walk, if we're tired, if we're weary, we're, we're missing it somewhere. We're not resting. We're, we're doing some works that we're not supposed to be doing. Because there is a, a, a place for the soul. It's not just our spirit that's bought and paid for. Our soul is bought and paid for. If he went through torment of the soul, and he did, then that was for me. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. That's a part of salvation that's for my soul. And I have to make it line up with the word. I have to remind my mind, no, calm yourself down. Do y'all talk to yourselves? That's a good thing. Talk to your mind. No, you're not thinking that. You're not going down that road. You will be at peace. You will be at rest. If you learn Psalm 23 as a child, start quoting it. He's written that word on your heart. And start telling yourself, this is the life. This is, how, this is how we're going to function, soul. This is the way you're going to be. Calm yourself down. Speak to yourself. I, I think so many times that we confuse busyness with productivity. You know, quote the word, say the word, listen to this. Do you, what's really productive? Yes, speak in line with the word. Yes. Read the word. Yes, listen to the word. But don't confuse busyness with productivity. Sometimes the most valuable thing that I can do is to rest in what I've already said. Sometimes I just need to shut up. Now y'all can put that on yourselves. But sometimes I just need to... No. This is, this is what I prayed. This is what I believed. And just shut up. Just rest in the promises that I've already got working in my life. Psalm 46. By the way, we're going to be short-winded tonight. And that way you can go home and rest. I only have so many scriptures in here tonight, but man, I needed this. I'm really bad about busyness. I've told y'all this before, but I had a minister friend of mine that sent me a book called Addicted to Busy, which I should have taken as my first hint when a friend sends you a book like that, but Tanya and I neither one have read it because we've been too busy. So I've read parts of it. I have some things underlined, and I will go back to it when things slow down. So I think that's funny. Thank you, David Insull, for that book. You know me well. Psalm 46.10, and apparently the congregation uh, needs to read it as well. I'm reading out the Amplified Psalm 46.10. Let be. Let be and be still and know and recognize and understand that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. I love that. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, our high tower, our stronghold. Selah, pause and calmly think of that. Stop 
Let be. Be still. Know that I am God. I am your refuge. I am your strong tower. I'm that place that you can run into and be safe. That you can slow down, catch your breath. That's in the Word that we can do that. We can rest in His Word. Pause and calmly think of that. It, it's, it's most often at these times that we, we get ourselves in the presence of God and we remember who it is that we serve. That the Word becomes most real to us. I mean, confessing the Word's important. Saying the Word's important. But meditating on the Word setting and just calmly thinking about what he's promised you, what he's said to you. To me, that's when the word becomes most real to me. Do y'all do that? I mean, you just sit and you just sit in it. I, I was dealing with a lady tonight who had called in while I was getting ready to teach and she was distraught. And I, I prayed over her. I said, just let me pray for you right now. I started speaking the word over her. And I said, now just go sit in that. What I was saying was just go rest in what's just been spoken over you. What the word says about you. Just go rest. Rest in that word and let it soak in and, and gain revelation knowledge. And, and that's when he instructs me and he tells me what to do. And I'm striving, going, Lord, tell me what to do. I need direction, God. You know, and I'm running my mouth so much, how's he supposed to say anything? We're not just supposed to talk to God and ask. We're supposed to listen. And listening takes quietness on my end. So don't forget to get quiet. We all have to remember that, I think, sometimes. If the word is wearing you out, you've got the tail wagging the dog. If the word is, if, the, if this walk of faith is wearing you out, then you're trying to work the word and sitting let, instead of letting the word work. Our job is to let the Word do its work, to protect that Word in ourselves while it does the Word. The Word works. Man, it works. When we let it do its work, it works, church. It won't fail. It has an assignment. Isaiah's very plain about that. He sends the, the Word down like the rain from heaven. It has a job to do. It will not return to him void. It will accomplish the thing that he sent it to do. I have to get out of the way. I have to let the word do its work. It has an assignment. It is anointed to do what God sent it to do. Go with me to Isaiah 40. It's not the scripture that we just talked about, but go to Isaiah 40. Release the word to work and let it work. Oh, this is a good one. It's another one that we, we've read a lot in our lives, but I think sometimes we forget to apply. Verse 28, I'm reading out of the Amplified. Have you not known and have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not faint nor grow weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint and to the weary, and to him who has no might, he increases strength, causing it to multiply and making it to abound. You gotta love the Amplified. I like those words. So if we're weak, if we're weary, this is great news for us. He wants to make sure you know who you are partnering, partnering up with do you not know, have you not heard, the everlasting God? He's not short-armed. He's not short in his capabilities. He's not a temporary God. He is the everlasting God. He will outlast your issue. He will outlast your problems. He will outlast last this thing that has come against you. You are partnering up, yoking up with the everlasting God. He is the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint. 
He does not grow weary. And if I'm going to partner up with somebody, that's who I want. My physical body may get tired. My mind may try to get tired. But I am partner, partnered up with the everlasting God, the creator of of the ends of the earth. He does not faint. He does not grow weary. There is no searching his understanding. He is not going to run out of ideas. He is not going to run out of ways. This problem is not got him stumped just because I can't figure out how it's going to work. There's no searching his understanding. He has more avenues than I can come up with. When I think I'm at a dead end street in my situation, there's no searching his understanding. He has another way. He gives power to the faint and the weary. He literally injects, infuses power into those who are faint and weary and to him who feels like he doesn't have anything left, no might. Have you ever said, I'm running on empty, I have nothing left? I've said it more times than I care to admit. To that person, he increases strength. He causes it to multiply and he makes it abound. Now, how do we apply this in my life? When I'm feeling tired, on E, I have nothing left, then I have to take my mind here. I have to remind myself. I have to tell my so, no, he has increased your strength. He has, he has multiplied and he is making his strength abound in me. And when you start talking like that and saying things like that, your soul will begin to be strengthened. Your physical body will be changed by the word. And then what do you do? You rest in it. You rest in it. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and selected young men will feebly stumble and fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, who look for, and who hope in Him shall change. They will change. It will change how you're thinking. It will change how you're functioning. They will renew their strength and their power. They will lift their wings and mount up close to God as eagles mount up to the sun. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint or become tired. Now if we talk tiredness all the time, we're going to walk tired. We're not going to get very far without feeling tired. But if we speak the word and we talk to our minds and we say what the word says about us, it'll put a renewed energy on the inside of us. I think about the, how much was drawn out of Jesus. We, we talked about it a little bit last week. Oh, it was Wednesday night. We talked about after John the Baptist had been murdered. And, and they came and they, they brought his body. I, I didn't talk a lot about it with the kids out here Wednesday night. But, I mean, let's be real. These disciples just got someone they loved, their body, with the head gone. Okay? And they bury him. And they go to Jesus and they break the news to him. And Jesus goes off to be alone. To process what he has just been told. His forerunner, John who prepared the world for him. Special relationship and bond between these two men. And he's just been told what happened, the deceit, the evil, the murder that has just happened to him. He goes off to be alone, but the multitudes followed him. And he couldn't turn them away because they were wanting. And he couldn't turn them away. Where did that energy come from? He was Jesus, but he had a soul, and he had a mind, and he had emotions. 
The scripture is very plain that we don't have a high priest that was not touched in the same way we are as a human. But he was human. He, he, he felt. He had to deal with. And for three days, he ministered to the multitude with this other situation at the back of his mind. How was he able to still have to give? How was he not empty? He had control of his soul. And he had a rest with the Father. And he took the time. Now that time he didn't get to take the time. But there, there's times, many times you'll see where he went apart to a mountain to pray. Or he got in a ship and he went to the other side. What was he doing? He was finding rest. He was gaining strength. And we, have to, we cannot forget to do that. We have to give our soul that place so that it doesn't become weary. 1 John 5. Start reading in verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. That doesn't sound tired to me. That doesn't sound weary to me. That sounds like victory to me. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world. It's what we believe. It's our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? We're not worn out warriors. We're not. I think a lot of people see Christianity as a bunch of worn out warriors, always fighting, fighting, fighting. We have a rest. We have a peace for our souls that no one else in this world has because of what we believe. And that makes us overcomers. In fact, Romans 8, he doesn't just call us overcomers. He doesn't just call us victors. He says we are more than conquerors. More than conquerors. That doesn't look like a worn out warrior to me. We stand in victory. We stand in a place of victory. Ephesians 6, it talks about the armor of God. This is what a warrior looks like. And when I read this, I don't see worn out warrior. I see a victor. I see somebody, you've come at me. I look like I'm ready to go again. I'm like, oh Lord, I hope I have a break from all this affliction. We're not worn out. We have a place of rest, we have a place to be built up in the Word that keeps our soul ready for the next fight so that we're more than conquerors. I love this in Ephesians 6, starting in verse 10. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong. Be strong. Be rested. Be strong. Be rejuvenated. Be strengthened in the Lord and in the power of His might. Once again, if I'm worn out, I must be fighting this myself. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the trickeries of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. You know, when you've got on the armor of God, you rest in there. That's a good place to be. What are you going to be afraid of and what's going to wear you down if you have your loins girt about with the truth? The truth is the word. You have on the breastplate of righteousness, knowing where you stand with God. And your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Taking the shield of faith. And you know that you're able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And you take the helmet of salvation. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And I missed the part I really wanted to read, verse 13. Take the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand. Not faint. Not faint. Withstand. Outlast. Overcome. 
in the evil day and having done all to stand stand therefore and when you picture this person dressed in this armor and having done all to stand standing it doesn't look like a loser to me Josiah that looks like a more than a conqueror to me and we've got to build up our souls and start seeing ourselves as strengthened as strong as these things in the word that he talks about here covering the, the helmet of salvation covers my mind it covers my mind I have a savior he has saved me from anything that this world throws at me I have to keep that on my head I have to keep that in my thoughts or I'm gonna get tired and I'm gonna get weary and I'm gonna start fighting my own battles my battle is to keep my mind on the word and let the word work and then step back having done all to stand stand in it rest in it I encourage you and I didn't put it down but I want to talk about the Sabbath for a moment our society is robbing us of a truth and that is this God worked for six days, and the seventh day he rested. That was God. God reserved a day of rest. And you can talk to me about what that rest was. It doesn't say. All I know is, is that it said six days he worked, and the seventh day he rested. And immediately he goes into this, I believe it's in Exodus, he starts saying, don't you mess with the Sabbath. It is holy. It is sanctified. It is set apart. And then it's in Hebrews. I believe it's Hebrews 4. 3, 4. 3 and 4. He talks about the Sabbath being a rest. And he says that the, sa the man was not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made for man. Why? Because we need a place to rest our souls. We need a place to come in, be built up, and rest our souls. Don't neglect the rest. Use it. It was made for you. It's to be observed by you, and it's to be kept holy by you. You need a day. You can argue which day the Sabbath is. I don't think that's an issue. I think the point is rest. Take a day with God that you rest your soul. The other six days, you're working to keep it rested. But the Sabbath, you get to come in. You get to be led into praise and worship. You get to sit back and hear the word and be fed and have your souls built back up so that you're ready to go again. Don't neglect your time with God. Not on the Sabbath and not on your daily your daily basis your soul needs it I think about how much input of weariness we get fed into us we, we talked about this a lot but look at how many mental medication commercials you see there's a cure for that it's called rest for your soul it's called the Word of God there is a place that we can be healed mentally I, I thoroughly believe it. Take medication if you need to take medication until you get a hold of the fact that God has made you whole. Spirit, soul, and body. It's been paid for. Type and shadow proves it. When the, when the death angel came through to destroy uh, the children of Israel, he had them put the blood on all three parts of the door. Spirit, soul, and body, every bit of it's covered by the blood. Don't you let the devil have your mind. Don't you let him have your energy. God has given you his strength and his mind. He's given you an invitation. Come if you're weary and if you're overwhelmed and overlabored. Come, I will give you rest. I accept that invitation. Thank you very much. Amen. Y'all can stand. This has been Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. 
If you would like more teaching, you can visit our website at www.rccenter.org or download our app to your device. The Russellville Christian Center is located at 305 Lakefront Drive. If you would like to purchase a copy of this program or if you would like more information, please call 479-968-7965.